Okay, this is a bare bones basic tutorial for how to set up your workflow for SDXL. Um, I'm going to start basic and it's going to get more complicated as I add stuff. So step one, you want to add um, your model loader. So in order to do that, you can double click on the background and it'll open up this search thing. And you can just type load and then find it that way. And you grab your model, which will be this. Now I'm going to set it up with just the one checkpoint, but the standard way of running this is to use Refiner as well. But it's a little bit more complicated, so that's going to stay down here for now. I might do it later. Um, then we want to sort out our clip text, right? So you can use the standard clip text encode. I suggest to not use that one. I suggest using the, um, instead to use the SDXL specific one, which is under um, advanced conditioning and then SDXL encode. Now you could use just the double click thing and go SDXL. So if you see me doing any of these things, you can just do this. I have a habit of going in and right click finding things. So <laughs> don't mind me if I end up faffing around with that a bit too much. So clip text encode SDXL. It's specifically for the base safe tensors model. And it has, it's got a whole bunch of options with it. Um, there's some trickiness to do with what all of this does and most of it doesn't really affect what you're trying to do if you're not doing anything particularly advanced. Um, you can just leave this stuff as it is and it should work fine, um, but I'll go into this in a bit more detail later, um, but you can use it to make your images look a little bit better. Otherwise it's not much help. All right, so clip G, clip L. So it's weird that this has two prompts, and the reason it does is it technically uses two different methods to uh, pass your prompt. So it goes through your prompt and it goes, okay, what words mean what, and what things can I find in my model that I can put in to this image? So clip G, in theory, as I understand it, it's not really been well explained by anyone as far as I can tell is for your primary source. So it's like your subject, your um, your location, um, the say if you want it to be a photo, you put photo up front, that kind of stuff. So it's like the, the stuff that definitely is going to be the focus, it's what's important, and so it has to be in G. And the less complicated stuff, the background, the... Um, the quality, like say you've got 70s photo or an old photo or um, film grain or something, that stuff goes in clip L. It doesn't need to be in clip G. Yeah, like it'll work, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, so if you right click on the box anywhere that's not in these actual boxes, you'll get different options there. You can change these to a different input. So this is something you'll find used a lot. So if you see me do it, I'm not going to explain it every time, but um, basically this is a very common way of sending information to your nodes differently than you would otherwise do it. Now the reason we break this out as text inputs is it gives us more flexibility. We, we will need to use the text that goes in these in more than one place later on. Like it will go into the refiner workflow. So instead of copying stuff between different boxes, it's easier just to use a shared kind of connection. So uh, standard way of doing this is to drag it out. And then you can, if you have something in here that says a text box or something, it'll work. These are custom nodes for me. Um, more than likely you'll have to go into utilities and do primitive if you don't have any custom nodes you'll need to do this and it will give you this thing which says it outputs a string so the string is it's basically a line of text 
and that's all it is. So it's a line of words and text and symbols. And the cool thing about strings is if you connect them all together, they're still a string. So if you have something else with a string and you have a way of merging them with a custom node, you can stick them onto each other. So you can basically use multiple of these to build one prompt if you do what we'll eventually be doing. But for now, I'm just going to do one text box and it's going to plug into both because this works and it's the easy mode way. It's like, uh, you know, your standard kind of 1.5 setup is to do this. Um, a cat on a roof, basically. All right. Conditioning out reroute. So I like to create what's called a bus, which is a, it's like a, a highway for your nodes, right? And it allows you to easily access certain kinds of repeatable data that you always need. So it's a good idea to have one of these. It's basically a line where you have a whole bunch of these laid out as a kind of group thing. That's the slow way of doing this. You, there are other ways of making this really quick. But uh, anyway, so my way of doing it is to actually have this out here. And then when I need nodes somewhere in here, click on the middle dot and go add node utility reroute. And it'll stick one in the middle so you don't have to make a new one and connect both ends of it. You know what I mean? So. This is the clean and easy way of doing it, and it'll give you the option to put some between them if you want. So anyway, this bus basically gives us the conditioning for positive now. So we're going to do a negative one. And a negative one uses the same text encoder. The same kind of primitive thing comes into it. And we'll say text. Um, Hmm. Rocks. Yeah, so there's no rocks in this image. Okay. Um, and we plug in the clip. And because we like to be neat and tidy, shift select, right click, colors, red. And we change the colors here as well to green. You can do this on the reroute nodes. I'll show you a little trick here as well. If you see this little connector here and you right click on it, click rename slot. You can say positive and it'll put text in there. If you right click on it and go title like you would with another thing, it's not gonna put any words in there. But if you do it on the these little connectors, it'll work. So you can do that. I it You'll be doing it a lot if you do it with these kind with the stuff in the bus. That you don't really need to do it with these, but um, you might do it if you build a little like you know like a, a little block which does upscaling or something. You might want to label the output so you know what each thing is. All right, so this is a typical bus. So it's got positive and negative. It's got your ve output. It's got your model. And that's everything that goes into a sampler. So we're going to add a sampler in the middle here. I really wish Comfy UI would actually have a better, like, that if you clicked on the middle thing, it would just let you do a reroute. It would be so much quicker. All right. So part one is done. That's your basic layout for creating the loader loading a model, building a prompt, and sending it through to a case sampler. So you can use a normal case sampler, which is the easy mode way. You just plug everything into it. Actually, positive to there, negative to there. It will need a latent image of some kind. So you could use uh, VE encode and then load an image, and that'll give you the ability to load an image as your source. 
in which case this needs to be a lot lower. You need to have a lower denoise. Uh, but um, if you don't want to do that and you just want to use a standard way that we do these things, you pull this out and pull out an empty latent image, which will give us the option of setting this. It's set to 512 by default, but you don't want that because 512 will not work properly with uh, SDXL. So we do it with 1024. There's a list of acceptable resolutions for this floating around on Reddit. Um, we'll talk about that later if I do a more advanced tutorial. But uh, it, it uh, it's got more more optim optimized like resolutions for this. It'll work better basically. All right, so I'm just going to leave this as it is and pull out your standard thing there. Now you can use save image or preview image. I use preview images almost exclusively because basically um, I don't like saving stuff on my hard drive unless I have to. It'll fill up with junk if I do that, the amount of stuff I generate. So if you Q prompt, it should work. So to load the model, if you've got your server window available, you can see it loading all this stuff. There you go. Alright. So now it's generating a kitty cat on a roof. And done. So as you can see, the image is not great. There's distortion that has a grey sky for no apparent reason. Um, there's some distortion around the eyes, the fur looks kind of wonky, legs weirdly positioned, the roof is just all kind of broken. Now one of the main reasons for that is the prompt is very kind of very simplistic, which is good, but the more complicated your sentence for building the image is, the more it's gonna have an idea what it wants to make and it's less likely to make weirdness but one of the other ways we can make this look better is by using the refiner which I'll show you later which you can set it up pretty much the same way you just use a different text clip encode and you plug it in so uh, 